Get ready for my movie thing! And I'll pronounce you Chuck and Larry. I don't like it. Wait, let me rephrase that. I don't find this movie funny. It's obviously made for the Mr. Woodcock crowd. However, as childish and homophobic as many of the jokes are, I think this movie stands a chance of actually reaching out to the kind of people who wouldn't go see The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Now, you may disagree with me on this, but I think Chuck and Larry may actually have a positive effect on the struggles that the gay community still faces today. As a movie, I'd give it a frown, but, all in all, I think this actually qualifies for a blank stare. It's time for more Bollywood, Lala Chunari Main Dog, also known as The Journey of a Woman. It's a touching film about a girl who goes to extraordinary lengths in order to save her family. The contrast of the cheery song and dance numbers with the actually pretty heavy emotional bits in this film actually makes the main characters fall from innocence all the more powerful. There are some stellar performances, particularly from the main character and the mum. I noticed something. Unlike in Hollywood movies, the men are actually taller than the women. If you only go see one Bollywood flick, if you're curious about Bollywood, then I suggest you go see this one. If only because the calm before the storm of the dramatic climax of the film is, you guessed it, a cheerful song and dance number. I'm gonna give it two brows. Oh yeah. Black Sheep. In 1992, Peter Jackson created the perfect New Zealand anti-zombie weapon, the lawnmower. In 2006, Jonathan King has created the perfect New Zealand zombie, the sheep. <laughs> Not quite. The effects are surprisingly good. The acting is good enough for this type of film, and the humour is good. It's gory, it's disgusting, and it's fun, fun, fun. Bugger saw, bugger hostel, black sheep is where it's at. Two eyebrows. The Invasion. Speaking as someone who hasn't seen the three other adaptations of the Body Snatchers, or read the book for that matter. I have to say, I don't think it's as bad as the RottenTomatoes.com 18% rating suggests. It's creepy, and to agree suspenseful. Though neither Kidman or Craig are on full form in this film, the acting is sufficiently good. The whole don't be a pod person, be a real human being with real human emotions moral of the story is slightly too heavy-handedly beaten into you. Which makes it a bit of a paradox that the movie actually kind of just makes you wish you were a pod person. You're fired! Oh. Your girlfriend is sleeping with your brother! Oh. The world is about to be destroyed by a gigantic cosmic fart! Oh well. I'll give it a whole brow! Wow! Finally, we come to... I can't describe how lovely it is to see Pixar back at the Finding Nemo level of filmmaking. Pixar are still the best in the industry as far as animation and looks go. Just compare Toy Story from 1995 with Hoodwinked from 2006, you'll see what I mean. Having said that, it doesn't scream, Look at me! I'm photorealistic! Ooh, touch me, touch me! Most of the time, it's quietly beautiful. Every single scene is immaculately designed, and they manage to give you a sense that they've actually animated a lot more than you see. Another good thing is that they don't rely on pop culture references for their humour, which basically means that you'll have a much more timeless film experience. You can watch this film in 20 years, and it'll still be funny. Hilariously so. I'm gonna give this a special rating. You've never seen me give this to a movie before. I'm gonna give it... Oh, gas me joy! That's all I've got for you today. I'll be back uh, probably next. Uh, what? Oh, how did you get. Uh, 
please help me eradicate my debt to Cafe Press by buying my stuff? As used by myself, Paper Lilies, Gymfraxia, and Nonny Gold. www.cafepress.com Magnus.